shout if you ignite him, he's a rope ahead of full proxy to be the greatest beast the world has ever seen. I feed him every day, leave the bones clean. I feed him all the hate and he grows me and he gets caused to a big piss off quick. And if you cross him, you might drop dead. Metaphorically, of course, said to live this war, never getting bored, loves the blood and gore. Always wanting more, feed him from the source. They don't really understand until they feel the force departed. If you start shit, you'll be heartless in the darkness. Torn apart quick, you left scars ripped, you'll be chewed up and discarded. And this world ain't right, won't accept it Negative energy, I expect it Once it's in your mind, it's infectious So fight for your life and reject it You better give me space, I'm protected My adrenaline spikes when I'm threatened And if you stay in my way, I'm aggressive Cause when there's no exit, I'll kill when I'm desperate And welcome to the Golden Octagon MMA Podcast with your hosts, Matt and D. Rose. And that is us indeed. I am Matt. D. Rose is on that side of your screen. And welcome to the Golden Octagon MMA Podcast. I believe episode 108, D. Rose. These are just churning out, man. Every single week we are doing one of these podcasts. And sometimes the fight cards are great, like this past weekend. And sometimes the fight cards are like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing in the Apex, like this upcoming weekend. But either way, we appreciate each and every single one of you for stopping by right over here on the Golden Octagon. Listen to us talk about some fights. Uh, yeah. So with that being said, on today's show, we're going to recap uh, UFC 299 real quickly, uh, give you our main takeaway from the point, because we weren't here Saturday. I was tired, and I did D-Rose was too. And unfortunately, I have to eat some beans. Uh, yeah, let's move past that. <laughs> and then uh, we we will uh, give you some UFC news and fight announcements that are targeted or uh, yeah, and or signed, whatever. And then lastly, we'll give you our preview and predictions picks for this upcoming weekend's UFC Vegas 88. We've got uh, Ty Tuavasa taking on Marcin Prakniao in the main event. But before we do all of that. Let's shout out the chat, and then I'll ask the Rose how he's doing, and then we'll get into the show. So with that being said, another go to Wednesdays with the boys, Lush Love, Maine. Appreciate you stopping by, Lush. Uh, looking forward to another golden show from Matt and Devious Rose. <laughs> <laughs> or was it Deceitful Rose or Dishonest Rose? <laughs> Either way, looking forward to it. Uh, Austin Damn. Rose did you Damn this Austin. Week. <laughs> LFG awesome. from Daniel Aker and then uh, Jim Clark collecting Golden Octagon Wednesdays yeah uh, Jim Clark like messaged me earlier he got his Usman in the mail so I'm glad you got it brother uh, from all the way from here to Canada he got it and uh, what's going on <laughs> uh, D Rose you want to help me there I'm not even going to try to butcher that uh, Jubadiah Jubadiah. All right. That is what D Rose says. <laughs> I cannot read. <laughs> Sorry, D. I had to. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, with that being said, D Rose, uh, how you've been over the past week, brother? And uh, yeah, do you, uh, yeah, did you win any bets and anything like that? And then we'll just kind of lead into this right here. So, how you doing? Do you win any bets this past weekend? And then we'll talk about the fights. Um, yeah, yeah. So did end up hitting a little, little chase afterwards. And, um, so if you guys followed on, uh, you know, change the cheddar Friday, if you looked at the eight leg that I put out there, um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are mad at jail to now made up, man. Cause that was, uh, <laughs> that was almost $300 right there that I, that I could have won. But, uh, but yeah, ended up hitting a little, uh, chase. I put, uh, JDM. MVP and uh sugar and uh in a parlay together uh bet 21 to win like a hundred and some and then uh and a best in, betting uh Dustin Poirier straight up so I, I bet like ten dollars on him and then I actually snuck another five in there try to get a four or five decision so I thought he was going to try to drag the fight out later but was able to uh end up saving myself and and for for nights like it was the other night man that's just I, I know we'll talk a little bit about it but those are just nights on on why we're fans, man. You know, just the ups and downs of of all those fights and uh, just wild results, early prelims, just a lot of finishes as well. Just going up into the uh, main card and uh, just a lot of different roller coasters as far as the fight wise and storyline wise. So, um, you know, those are re big reasons why we're big fans of the sport. 
Yeah, man. Uh, me, on the other hand, I did not win anything, dude. Even when I chased, I also lost that too, dude. So the one that broke my first parlays of the night was Marina Moreau's, but thankfully I didn't have her in everything, and I had a little bit of money in my account, so I chased. Marina Moreau's lost. I thought she was probably going to win. You know, she won in their first fight, you know, years ago. Joanne Woods retiring. You know, she should win again. End up not happening. And then, like you said, Jelton Almeida losing the Curtis Blades right before the pay-per-view started. That was like, ah, here we go. But you had enough time to chase still because the pay-per-view hadn't started. So put more money in my account. Put a few more parlays together, and I think I had Song winning or BSD winning, and either way, them them two just end up just ruining my night, dude. So I had a straight on, I had a straight bet, Sean O'Malley KO round two or three, and dude, he got close. As you said, we'll get into it, but aside from that, dude, I you know I. I don't bet at the almost casino, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, almost does not count. So I did not win anything this past weekend. So with that being said, uh, let's get into it. Fights from this past weekend. Main event, D-Rose, um, Cheeto versus Sean O'Malley. Man, uh, I said that's probably how the fight was going to go, but because the line, what it was, you couldn't really bet it. It was like plus 145 Sean O'Malley by decision and, so I was like, I'll I'll take the shot at him, like KO two three at like plus seven fifty. It was like worth the shot. But Sean O'Malley just puts a masterclass out over uh, Chris Matunio, dude. I couldn't have been more happier. I'm so glad that fight went the way it did. Do I wish he would have gotten a knockout? Yeah, but you know, Cheeto's impossibly durable, dude. <laughs> like that that knee that Sean landed would have literally knocked out anyone else in the division, dude. And it's shitty to say, dude, but Sean O'Malley looked made Cheeto look like Chris Moutinho for a full five rounds, dude. Until that last punch there at the very, very end, dude. Like I I just don't feel like Cheeto could could really land anything at all, man. Just Sugar just put on a fantastic performance over five rounds. There's no more uh wondering can he last five rounds? What's his cardio like, dude? He just just put on a masterclass all five rounds and you know let's go sugar show i don't like that he wants to move up to fight delia though but you know that's for a different day stay down here knock out marab and then maybe fight Corey and umar that'd be good for me but anyway d rose what is your thoughts on the main event this past week um yeah i did think that was you know basically how it's going to play out i mean i didn't i should have just bet just the straight up by points and i know it was only plus 145 but i mean we we kind of knew in the end that that was how it was going to go and uh Hmm. oh man no lush i feel bad brother i feel bad hey i mean he's going (laughs) he's going for the dogs Uh, hey i I, I feel you there i i get what you was doing you was trying to get a little dog money out of it but uh, oh. I mean, you had some other dogs on the main card, but uh, but hey, I, I feel you, I feel you, but um, but no, the the fight ended up playing out how we thought it was going to, so I feel stupid for not even taking that plus 145, even if it was plus 145, that's that's kind of guaranteed money and it's plus money at that. So, um, I bet three leg parlays at plus 145, so let's not uh, let's not get too crazy <laughs> here, but yeah. uh, but yeah, I, I do think that uh, man, Cheeto just otherworldly tough, dude, just to be able to. Uh, take the knee the way that he did, and uh, I'm pretty sure there there's got to be some type of facial fractures that are in there. Um, I don't, of course, I haven't seen any reports or anything, but man, you got to think there's some type of damage like that, like extensive damage that he took to his face uh, from that. But never once got dropped for any of it. I mean, that dude is just absolutely uh, the most durable person in the UFC, and uh, it's just crazy. But uh, Sean, yeah, just his striking was clean. Uh, as far as him, uh, I mean, Cheeto came on along there in the fourth and fifth round, so I did like the way he was able to put a little bit of pressure on him there. Uh, but I I feel like that Cheeto, his biggest thing is that he always ends up starting so late. Um, and Sean had just already added up so much damage so that, I mean, I felt like for Cheeto, sometimes it was probably hard for him to see because both of his eyes were, like, swollen there in the fourth round. Um, he started having a little bit more success landing and did start to jab up uh, Sean a little bit for the most part. Like I said, just uh, it was pretty much Sean. Even when uh, Cheetah started getting a little bit of pressure there in the fifth, you could see Sean kind of, uh, you know, kind of get the sense of urgency to say, hey, okay, I got to put my stamp on this fight here. And uh, he ended up closing it out well outside of that 
outside of that last body shot. Indeed, dude. Indeed. Uh, and Jim Card collecting saying, uh, here we go. Uh, you're, <laughs> you're saying alcohol affects a person's judgment. Not at all, Austin. Not at all. <laughs> uh, I don't even know why anybody would say that. It would have nothing to do with making bad decisions. I, yeah, that, that's no. not relatable at all. <laughs> <laughs> Ilya and Sean both need to defend their belts uh, for a bit. I agree, Jim Card Collecting. Uh, just encourages dumb decisions. Uh, PV, uh, PVP, most durable. Yeah, pro pro probably that that chin. And then we got that way stopping by. Hola, mi amigos. What's going on, Matt? Appreciate you stopping by today, brother. Hanging out with your boys. Uh, yeah. What's up? So... With that being said, D-Rose, co-main event was one that, dude, I was so high on Benoit Saint-Denis. And then earlier in the week, the reports started coming out that he's like, does he have staph infection? Because the thing on his head, I was like, oh, no, don't do this to me. But I was like, if the fight happens, I still think BSD could probably get DP out of there, dude. And I probably just should have took the uh, took the under, dude, because, <laughs> you know, that – that fight, as soon as it started round one, I was like, oh, there's no way this is going five rounds, dude. One of them has to, like, has to get finished. And sure enough, DP, second round, dude, ends up, I think, dropping BSD. He ends up getting back up, and then he ends up just snoozing him, dude. So, yeah, Dustin the Diamond Poirier shut down another contender. So, Justin Poirier, Justin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, Gaethje shuts down the contender that was Rafael Fazeev, and then Dustin Poirier shuts down the young contender that was BSD. Charles um, Oliveira is fighting, uh, I believe, Saryukian next, dude. So that'll be the yep. next one. Can Oliveira shut down Saryukian? Because if so, dude, that old guard just still hanging around at the top of 155, man. But, uh, yeah, thoughts on the co-main event? And uh, and the funny thing that you mentioned, all those guys, you know, for Gagey, Poirier, um, everybody called them, uh, you know, like rank squatters, like that they were uh, squatting on their rank, that they didn't want to find anybody less than uh, less than they were ranked. But uh, but as you see, when they end up getting these guys, they end up showing why they're the top dogs in the division. And I just thought for Poirier, uh, I mean, the way that BSD was coming out, man, he fights the same way every single time. And, dude, I remember at points in time in the Tiago Moises fight, when he had Tiago Moises backed up against the fence, and Tiago Moises was landing overhand right after overhand right, and it it was just stuck in my mind going into this fight. So I'm telling myself, dude, there's no way that you're going to tell me if BSD, if BSD is just going to stand there and just eat shots that Poirier with his cleanest counter shots as he's got that he's not going to land at least one of those things, man. Uh, those guillotine attempts were one thousand percent <laughs> legendary. Um, so he was driving me crazy when he kept using his legs like to try to sink in the guillotine fully. But when he had BSD hurt and BSD went for a takedown and he went to sink in that kind of that high breast guillotine, oh dude, it, it immediately got BSD off of him and uh it cleared the way for him to land the counter shot to get the get the KO. So um yeah, I just thought Dustin, man, for me personally, he was the MVP of the pay-per-view. Um, I, I thought he was – I know Sean was the was the main event, but I thought for me, Dustin Poirier probably got the biggest crowd pop and uh, was probably the biggest storyline coming out of the fight, especially with just as, as emphatic of a finish as he got to land that. I mean, just a beautiful counter shot. And uh, just to walk away cold-blooded the way he did, you know, kind of no celebration as him walking away. And, dude, like, I got so pumped. I mean, me and uh, Amber and uh, uh, we had Tahid over here, too. And uh, that's one of my other friends. And we were all, like, we just jumped up and was going crazy. Dude, I remember hearing the crowd. I mean, I got cold chills. I mean, it was such a, yeah, it was such a boss moment, man. And just to be able to uh, see Poirier kind of pull that old dog in him that we knew he always had. But, um, yeah, man, that was just absolutely awesome to watch. Hell yeah, dude! I'm 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 glad you have a uh, moment for that fight, dude. Uh, MVP made his debut against Kevin Holland, dude. And I'm gonna be honest, the fight kind of sucked, man. Uh, like I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> like I feel like these past few Kevin Holland fans, like uh, Kevin Holland fights, like I'm a huge Kevin Holland fan. It's like when the fights are cool, when there's a person getting finished, dude. But when there's like back and forth, and they're just kind of staying in there like a whole lot, dude. 
fights kind of suck. Like him, like like fucking versus like uh like fucking JDM kind of sucked. This fight kind of sucked, dude. But it's like at the same time, it's like MVP is just gonna is just gonna do whatever he can to not get hit, dude. You know, and he's just so much quicker, like more in and out, dude. He's sharp, dude. I think he could cause a lot of people problems at 170 but he is 37 years old now so i don't know how much time he has left but for sure some interesting fights can be made uh what's your thoughts on mvp's debut against kevin hollerman um yeah i mean i'm an mvp fan you know i i told you i'd always been kind of a fan of him and i watched you know plenty of his fights in bellator um i mean i like the the showmanship aspect that he brings to the fight i mean for him you know just the the bounce that he has the the swagger I mean, you kind of want him to have a little bit more of a finishing instinct because I thought there was a couple moments there where he had kind of them darting right hands that he stepped in with, and uh, it looked like he kind of had Kevin Holland hurt. But, dude, I mean, how many times could he have landed that spinning elbow and have not hurt Kevin Holland? I mean, he landed at least three of those spinning elbow attacks, hit Kevin Holland right in the chin and Kevin Holland ate it. Like it was just a box of cereal and just kept going. And, uh, but for me, MVP, I thought it was just a, a clean performance from him. Wish he would have gone for the finish a little bit more, but, um, that that's kind of always been his fight style. And I, I like the, I like the dances and stuff that he does in between. I just think he's just a little bit different than, uh, than what most fighters do nowadays. And, and that's what I appreciate about him the most. Nice. Nice. That's what's up, brother. Um, heads up, boys. The UFC store has 24 for 24 chrome hobbies. I don't know, uh, for a hundred dollars, I don't know if they'll honor the price, but just order one. Well, good luck. Hopefully, I can uh, be on there and get one after the podcast. Eh, let me try to do it real quick. Um, with that being said, let's see what we got. Uh, Matt grabs his phone, <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> uh, because I would like to. I would like to try to get one if possible. Let's see. Yeah, I think I might be able to. Yeah, yeah, that one too. <sighs> All right. Well, so. I, th I think a lot of people just don't think. I think a lot of people just didn't think that MVP was going to be that good. I think a lot of people saw the highlights. Some people thought, well, he just fought a couple Bellator cans and that's it. But I mean, he fought guys like Douglas Lima, Logan Storley. Um, he even fought Paul Daly. Uh, Paul Daly is a guy in Bellator who's a well noted kickboxer. And that was supposed to be like one of the biggest scraps. I think I even told you that I had just purchased the zone. Or I started like a subscription with them just to watch that fight. It was the first time I had ever had anything to do with the zone. And uh, that fight ended up sucking because Paul Daly tried to wrestle uh, all five rounds after promising he was going to go in there and, and knock MVP out unconscious. And uh, yeah, it, it, that fight didn't deliver either. But uh, I, I thought this one, this one definitely, you know, I'm not going to say it was the most fun fight on the card, but it definitely had, uh, it definitely had uh, its fun aspects to it. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to like to see what MVP does, uh, you know, kind of move forward. Yeah. I would like yeah, – uh, I want to see MVP – that's exactly what I was going to say. The, MVP versus the, Wonder Boy, I think that – I don't want to see that, dude. That's no? going to be a staring contest. That's going to be a staring contest. You need to get somebody who's going to match up with MVP that's going to be – MVP can put on the pressure a little bit more. But, uh, dude, they're both karate guys, man. They're 1,000%. And they're, they're mostly – counter shot artists they're just going to sit there and stare at each other and wait for the first one to make a mistake yeah i'm, I'm, I'm not i'm not interested in that fight me first fair, fair enough dude fair enough uh jdm versus um uh gilbert burns dude uh ends with a third round i guess not flying knee but flying knee started the damage and then it came out after the fight i think today that jack uh jack's arm was broken dude so Jack Jack Della, just an absolute dog. He was losing that fight too. Crazy enough, because I didn't, I thought he won the first round, and I, I thought he won the first round. I thought Gilbert cleanly won the second, so I thought there was no dispute about that. But um, and then going into that third, I thought that I thought it was up to anybody's fight, and I thought that once you know uh, JDM was kind of able to do that uh, kick off the fence and twist to be able to get up, I thought that if he kind of put on a late flurry there. 
even if he didn't get the finish, I thought that he could have stolen that round and possibly won the fight. So, uh, but yeah, I thought that was an awesome finish from JDM, the way that he was able to land that knee. Uh, I mean, Gilbert Burns was landing big shots, dude, big elbows. I mean, uh, JDM ended up walking out of the place looking like a unicorn because he had a big old knot on his forehead from one of the elbows that Burns landed. So uh, that was an awesome fight. And uh, yeah, for JDM to get that finish the way he did, and exactly when he needed it as well. He needed that finish, and and he got it, man. So And uh, for him to move up to, I think he's number five in the welterweight division now. So, yeah, I mean, there's not going to be too many more fights before the title fight. And I'm not going to lie. I actually like that he called out Shavkat after the fight, man. I mean, I, I think there's nobody willing to call out Shavkat right now. And he realizes that, hey, if if anything, that could be a number one contender fight. Because I think Bilal is kind of getting kicked to the side right now. And, uh, yeah, I think there's a very good chance that if that fight's to happen, Shavkat and JDM, uh, the winner of that could fight for the title next. Hell yeah, dude. I like the fight. Uh, Matt saying, all right, 2 a.m. here in Europe. Got to head out. Night, boys. <laughs> I hope this stream goes well. <laughs> Matt, you are an animal, dude. Appreciate you stopping by tonight, dude. Um, yeah, DeRoso, main event, I mean, the not the main event, the first fight on the pay-per-view was Song Yudong versus Piotr Jan, dude. I thought Song was probably going to just put the damage on Piotr Jan to at least win a judge's decision, dude, if not get him out of there, because I thought Jan was going to try to start quicker, dude. But, dude, even though I think Song probably won the first round, um, dude, Piotr Jan's boxing in round two and round three is just so clean, dude. It's it just like he wasn't able to be hit, man. And, you know, the dog Piotr Jan still a threat in the Bantamweight division. Uh, what's your thoughts on uh, the main – I keep – I said it again. The first fight on the pay-per-view, D-Rose. Yeah, yeah, I, I got you, man. I got you. But um, but no, I thought that was that was an awesome fight. And I thought you could say, I know people say the co-main event was the fight of the night, but I thought you could say low key that this was the main the fight of the night because uh just the way that you know we knew that this was going to be a, a great matchup, but the only reason why I was leaning Peter Young going into this fight is that I just knew that his boxing was a little bit cleaner than Song Yudong's. Uh Song Yudong starts fast. But uh, he does tend to throw a lot more hooks, a lot more uh, looping punches versus uh, Peter Young throws a lot more straights. And, his dude, his head movement in the pocket is just so clean, just the way that he can stand in there and trade with you. Um, I love when and when him and Song were just standing in the pocket and they're just winging big shots. And Song landed his, his own as well. Uh, he wasn't able to land that, land that right hand as cleanly as he wanted, but he landed a couple of good uppercuts, a couple of good left hands. And uh, yeah, them boys, them boys scrapped it out. Peter Jan had a couple of tricky takedowns there too. The way he was kind of like able to do like that step through, uh, kind of like foot sweep to kind of throw Song on the ground a couple times. Uh, dude, it, it was an it was an awesome fight, and I'm glad uh, I'm glad Peter Jan was uh, able to help me get closer to uh, closer to not eating the beans. <laughs> yeah, dude. And speaking of that, we just have one more to talk about before beans uh, that I kind of want to. Touch on real quick, Curtis Blades and uh, Jelton Almeida, dude. Jelton Almeida probably needs to go back down to 205, yeah? Uh, I think he just needs to learn some striking and just have a little bit of confidence. Or uh, how about you just not sit there and just eat punches there for, for about 60 seconds from Curtis Blades until he finally gets you out of there? Like, I mean, we know that Curtis isn't the best athlete or whatever, but uh, if there's one thing that he does have is power in his hands, and it's heavyweight. Everybody's going to have at least some sense of power. You're not just going to be able to sit there and hold on to somebody's leg and hope that they're just not going to punch you in the head. This is not a grappling match. This is an MMA match. This is a fight. You need to go out there and be prepared to take some type of shots if you get in those positions and you're not blocking. I agree, dude. I agree. It was Ryan Span like yes. I honestly, I he was worse than Ryan Span because at least Ryan Span, him and Johnny Walker had both rocked each other a couple of times before that had happened. So at least I can say, well, hey, Ryan Span was rocked in that moment before, uh, before that had happened. No, Jelson Almeida literally just dove at his leg, and I think for me, I think it was just because he was tired. Because you know why? You're trying to pick up a 255 pound man time after time again and throw him down. He did exactly what Alexander Romanov did against Marcin Tybora. Just kept trying to take him down. Mar uh, Marcin Tybora kept getting back up. Romanov got tired, and Tybora took over and won the fight. That's exactly what 
uh, happened there, except Almeida literally just hung onto his leg. And yes, I'm salty because he killed our parlay. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know how uh, how confident I'm going to be picking uh, Jelton Almeida in the future. But uh, but yeah, definitely for now, yeah, he's he's definitely on my bad side. Yeah, man, you are not the only one, and you kind of gave a little prelude to it, but. Eat the beans, dude. So this past weekend, we did have five different fights uh, to decide this pick champ um, up on the line. And they were uh, starting on the early prelims. It was uh, Robelis to Spain taking on Josh Parisian, where I did go Robelis to Spain and you went Josh Parisian. And funny enough, the Rose, that was the only one that I uh, beat you in for the night. Because the next four uh, were Caitlin Chukagian versus Macy Barber, where I went Caitlin Chukagian and you went Macy Barber. And then three on the main card that were um, Piotr Jan versus Song Yidong, where I went Song Yidong, you went Piotr Jan. Uh, Kevin Holland versus MVP, where I went Kevin Holland and you went MVP. And then uh, co-main event, Dustin Poirier versus Benoit Saint-Denis, where I went Benoit Saint-Denis, and you went Dustin Poirier. So you got four out of the five. Not quite a clean sweep. So thankfully, which means I only have to eat two of the Bean Boozle this week. So hopefully, uh, you know, I can give you guys some entertainment and, uh, you know, Get some decently not terrible flavored beans. Uh, I was gonna say, uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully you get some good beans. You, yeah, you, if there's anything you deserve right now, it is uh because because I'm not gonna lie, your boy been been on a roll this year, and uh, so yeah, if, there, if there's anything I gotta hope for you right now, I gotta hope you get some good beans, man. Yeah, uh, Lush says, shout out Allison. I just ordered a top scrum hobby. I did as well uh, right now. That's why I was being quiet. I also sent it to Joe from Joe's Card Stash, and he said he ordered one as well. So hopefully it comes through and it only costs $100 because I pre ordered three of them now at $240. So if I can order one for $100, I'll consider it a win. <laughs> Sweet man, I hope they ship. Uh, if they don't ship, we riot. We should. We we go to Fanatics and throw eggs at them. Uh, what do we think about Michel Pereira? Dude has absolutely mauled his last two opponents. Yeah, he looks fantastic at uh, 185. And dude, D-Rose, that fight kind of went exactly how I said it was going to last week on the podcast. I'm like, I think he's going to hurt him to the body and I think he's going to finish him. But my dumbass bet, uh, knock out one or two or sub two or three. So I'm an idiot. So we got the bean boodles. Uh, or do you want to talk about this while I get my um, shit ready? What's up, gents? Uh, been lacking. How y'all been? What's going on, Jay Wolf? Appreciate you stopping by. Also, you are a member again. I believe you got the membership from someone else this past uh, week, Jay Wolf. Uh, Jay yeah, Wolf. D-Rose, so, so uh, go for it, brother. Thoughts on Michel Pereira? Yeah, dude, I'm excited for Michel Pereira at 185. I mean, I love the energy that he brings. And we didn't talk about MVP and his walkout, which I, I like the walkout that he did. He elaborated a little bit too long on that walkout, but I also love the walkout that Michel Pereira had. He kind of had the coordinated dance before he came in. Uh, you know, he was able to use his swag. And, uh, dude, I swear, like, every – Michelle Pereira, we remember the the memes from Alex Pereira a couple years ago when it was like he just keeps getting bigger and, like, Alex Pereira was, like, bigger than, like, Shaq. Like, I swear Michelle Pereira is that same dude. Like, when they faced off, I told you on Change of Cheddar, I was like, yeah, the, you know what? They look the same size, so I'm still going Michelle Pereira, but – Oh, Shay Shay is a dog, so it does kind of worry me. Dude, I swear when they got in the octagon, Michelle Pereira was three weight classes bigger than him. It, just, it was insane. I don't even understand how he did it, but uh, yeah, dude, I, I'm going to be excited for Michelle Pereira. His last two fights at middleweight hadn't even gone out of like the first minute and a half. Uh, yeah, he's a savage. Yeah, man. Uh, he is for sure a savage. Oh, dude, I don't want to do this. I get, They're both orange, dude. One's a light orange and one's like an orange orange. So it looks like dead fish or strawberry banana smoothie, barf or peach. So not sure if you can see. That's my color. Oh, shit. Almost Come dropped on. Them. Get a peach. Almost dropped them. So I'm going to put one down, dude. 
we got the light orange one, which is either dead fish or strawberry banana smoothie. So, God, dude, please don't be dead fish, man. Oh, some tilapia. That one's good, too. That one's oh. good. Strawberry banana smoothie. Oh, uh, we need like the uh you remember like on uh on millionaire, you remember like right before like the question would be asked is like da, 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 da. <laughs> we need like that type of like on background music, like whenever we're eating the bean to like wait to decide what flavor it is. All right, dude. Da, Next da, one here da, da, da. is the I'm gonna do a drop. dark orange one, which is either gonna be either barf or peach. So if it's barf, I might just throw up myself. So <laughs> I'm going to have the flavor in my mouth either. Barf or barf. Or peach. Double so here barf. We go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I hate this game, dude. It was your idea. It was you. Well, because you wanted me to drink fucking hot sauce, D Rose. I can't drink hot sauce. You're gonna ruin me the next day, man. At least this is over quickly. It just fucking tastes all like why can't I get the good one last, dude? Now I have this fucking now it literally tastes like fucking throw up in my mouth, dude. Double bar. I was say at least you're not going to uh at least you're not going to have your dinner sitting in there in your in your bag like you had uh like you had a couple weeks ago. Oh man. That sounds that sounds brutal. Sounds like you're about to about to barf again. Uh, dude, that's not oh. good. <laughs> uh that is a that is a word. Where, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm glad that's fucking over. Why do I keep fucking <laughs> losing? And when you lose, you get all dude. You ate five beans <laughs> in a row that were all good, dude. <laughs> I don't dude, understand. I had dude, I'm a dude. I had two of the same color ones that were tutti fruity, <laughs> and they were both tutti fruity. Like it's actually, I can't, I can't explain it. I can't explain it, dude. It's crazy. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Uh, yeah. All right. So here we go. What the hell? Pretty. Uh, I was going to sign up this time. Y'all got to stop gifting memberships. I really appreciate it, boys. I'm pretty sure Derek gifted you this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Get them beans. Awesome. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, we already know what's about to happen. Yeah, we we know. <laughs> wow, finally a good one. <laughs> uh, look how excited Deer is. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh goodness, <laughs> brutal. Because <laughs> I, 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 I knew it was barfing. coming, man. I knew it was coming. Uh, Once he said bar, I was like, oh man, yeah, I know he's getting it. <laughs> It's safe to say Matt isn't part of Bean Gate. I am not part of Bean Gate. I play the game how it should be played, Lush. All right. So the beans are now over. Thank goodness, dude. I hate that. We got some UFC news and fight announcements to go over. So let me get my screen share. Dude, my eyes are stinging now because they're they teared up a little bit. I clicked the wrong button. Uh that's fine. Right. Man. Yeah. Man, I just want you to get one bad bean one time. You're going to be like, oh, it's toothpaste. Oh, it's so nasty. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I swear, uh, I was so prepared for the last one to be nasty last time, but it ended up working. Uh, all right. All right. So our first fight announcement that we have is a rematch or not a yeah, a rematch. Yeah, a rematch that is rescheduled, I guess. Matthias Nicolau taking on Manal Cap number two, uh, April 27th. And, uh, I believe the first time that these two fighters fought, uh, it turned out with Manel Cap looking something like. <laughs> when, when he lost the judge's decision, he just didn't understand. But this is going to be happening again. Uh, I guess you care about that at all, D-Rose, April 27th? Uh, it should be a good fight. I mean, flyweight's kind of sorting itself out right now. It's kind of in a complete shamble because you can you could say that Roy Ball's supposed to be the uh, title challenger, but he just lost to Pantoja. Um, Akayev just didn't have a good performance. So flyweight's kind of up in the air and looking for 
uh, looking for some type of contender to step up. So maybe it could come from this fight. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, dude, I think he he probably wins this fight. I think at some point he's at least going to fight for the championship. Will he win? Who knows? Dude, and this is headlines, UFC Vegas 91. So that's going to be five-rounder probably at the apex. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably so. And, I mean, yeah, especially with the five-round fight as well. It looks like they're kind of grooming one of them to uh, get ready for a title fight. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, Sung Woo Choi is out, and Morgan Charrier, I believe he is the last pirate, the French dude, when thou face the Roses guy, Chepe Mariscal, at UFC Vegas 90, April 6th, man. That's uh, the last pirate, dude. He's pretty interesting fighter, dude. Pretty good, but Chepe Mariscal, also a good fighter, dude, but I feel like he beat Trevor Peak and then kind of beat... Um, who was the last dude? Jack Jenkins. Yeah, I think it was Jack Jenkins with the with the weird arm break injury, dude. So I still really don't know where Chepe sits at in the UFC. So, what's your thoughts on this fight, man? I mean, for me, yeah, uh, uh, Shari is the one that I feel a little less uh, knowledgeable on. As far as I mean, I've I've seen that he's had some great performances. I know he had that. That sick body kick, um, the finish that he had, and uh, and I, I can't, remember, I think it was one of the UK cards that he had last year, but um, I yeah, feel I like I've seen enough Paris, yeah. I've seen uh, Chepe fight enough now to, to kind of get a feel for him to to know that that dude's a dog, man. And he trains with uh, I believe one of his foreign partners, normally Justin Gaethje, for, for a lot of times too, so um, you know, he's got that dog in him if he's if he's sparring with uh, Gaethje a lot as well. <laughs> And uh, man, I'm a Chepe fan, so yeah, I'm excited about that fight. What's your thoughts on <laughs> like luscious proposal here, dear? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we'll take it into consideration. We'll take it into consideration. Uh, did you guys see the X-ray for JDM's arm? Yeah, dude, that's absolutely nuts. That thing, uh, that thing broke. I did it. Uh, which round did it break? I think the first round, lush. Yeah, uh, for him to dog it out after the first round, he's a just an absolute dog. Yeah, dude. Uh, another one. It looks like Darren Till, but it's not. Uh, <laughs> we've got Davey Grant is out, and Miles John steps in on short notice to face Cody Gibson, UFC Vegas 89 on March 23rd. That's by next weekend. What's your thoughts on that, or do you care at all, D-Rose? Uh, yeah, don't really care. Cool fight. Fair man. enough. Uh, we're going to get into the results from this past weekend real quick. JoJo Calderwood defeating Marina Moros. Uh, we've got Asu Omambayo defeating CJ Vergara decision. Uh, we, we've got the only one that I beat D-Rose in for the, uh, on the picks for the night. Was this one right here? An 18-second knockout going backwards. He's going to be a problem at heavyweight, man. Uh, Michelle Pereira looked good. <laughs> that fight was ass. Um, Kyler Phillips looked fantastic over Pedro Munoz. Um, that was a closer fight than I would have liked, man. Dude, uh, RDA actually rocked uh, uh, Gamma right there in the first round. I think <laughs> I he, know, up, dude. he hit him with hit him with the knee, similar <laughs> knee that JDM ended up hitting Gilbert Burns with, and then he hit him with like a, a nice uppercut and dropped him. Uh yeah, push Gamrod to the limit, but yeah, I did think Gamrod. Uh, I thought I thought he won round two and three for sure. Yeah, Macy Barber defeating Chukagian. Curtis Blades gets the dub. Peter Yan gets the dub. There's Jack Dilla finishing Gilbert Burns a little bit late, in my opinion. Dan Dan may have had something against uh, Gilbert Burns this week because he let him get elbowed quite a few times, man. Yeah, I listened to Alexander Sterling's podcast, and he said that he thought that. That was a good stoppage because he basically gave Gilbert time. I'm sitting here Jesus, screaming. Time to what? Get knocked back awake? <laughs> Jesus dude, I'm, I'm sitting here like, dude, how many more elbows can he <laughs> eat before he ends up calling this fight, dude? I mean, he just <laughs> elbow after it was clear that Gilbert Burns was not there to fight anymore, that he took a big shot, was hurt. Uh, he took big elbows, and yeah, that was a, that was a terrible stoppage. <laughs> uh, anyway, added to UFC 300, we do have Hanato Moicano taking on the Tarantula, Jalen Turner. That's going to be an interesting one, yeah? I got probably Jalen Turner smoking Hanato Moicano, though, dude. 
Uh, man, I don't know. That is interesting. I think uh, Moicano is a little bit bigger than what people give him credit for. It's crazy to see that he made 145, considering how big he is at 155. And uh, we've seen Jalen Turner get taken down a lot, man. So I don't know. I think that fight's a lot closer than you think. All right. Uh, MVP defeats Kevin Holland. Uh, DP defeats BSD. Sugar Sean O'Malley with a knee heard around the world, dude. Anyway. Uh, we've got Victor Henry taking <laughs> on Honey. I, I, dude, this fight ain't gonna happen. You, do you think it happens? Uh, if it does, it's going to be a god awful fight. So yeah. I don't care either way. <laughs> All right, dude. We have one that I do care about. Pat Sabatini is out, and Nate Landwehr will now face Jamal Pretty Boy Emmers at UFC Atlantic City on March thirtieth which is a fight that I'm actually more a fan of because Jamal Emers is a striker. He's going to come out there and bang, as where Pat Sabatini is going to go out there and try to wrestle. And I want to see a uh, Nate the Train barn burner, baby. So I'm a fan of this fight. How about you? Uh, yeah, I am. Have you uh, Have you already gotten your tickets yet? Yeah, yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. I joined the uh, – the UFC Fight Club, it's 100 bucks a year, but you get uh, access to pre-sale tickets so three days before everyone else, so you can get your tickets first. So nice. that's what I did. Nice. Got my tickets, didn't have to pay a resale or anything like that. There were uh, about 250 each, dude, for me and my girlfriend to go. So not, not bad. We're just going to drive uh, up there, I think, Thursday after we get off of work. Not next week, but the week after. And then uh, come back Sunday night. So we're going to go up there for uh the weigh-ins on friday and then we'll see the fight saturday hang out and then leave sunday morning drive back home anyway we've got abus magomedov taking on warley alves uh ufc vegas 92 may 18th you care about that oh this might be the battle for the worst gas tanks in the ufc <laughs> i mean this fight might last like a minute and a half because both of them have a round of just kick ass and no, then after that, they're done what's going to happen is they're both going to come out hot as fuck, and then they're both going to gas, and neither one of them are going to have the gas to finish the other one. So it's just going to go to the decision to split the decision. Going to, nah, <laughs> then it's going to look like Kimbo Slice versus a dot out 5,000, and then one of them is going to like miss the punch, and then the other one is going to like stumble over and have a heart attack all over. And then like, oh, one of them is going to miss the punch and then fall down, and the other one just raises his hands like he just did something while the other guy is just on the ground. Like, yes, I win. I'm the last one standing. Uh, oh, goodness gracious. Here we go. So up next, uh, we do have uh, Gabriel Miranda is out. Uh, Billy Corintillo Billy Corintillo will now face Yusuf Zalal. I haven't seen Yusuf Zalal in a little bit, dude. UFC Vegas, 89, March 23rd. Do you care about that one? Uh, Decent fight, but, but yeah, I don't really care. All right. We've got Tim Elliott taking on uh, Tatsuru Tayara, UFC Vegas 92, May 18th. You care about that one? Uh, that's pretty interesting. That's a pretty decent step up for uh, Tatsuru Tyra. And we've seen Tim Elliott give those grapplers at, at 125 a problem if they're not able to uh, mix in the striking. So that should, be a, yeah. uh, that should be a good fight. But also the grappling seems to be his weakness too. So I guess we'll see, dude. Uh, as you said, an interesting one, dude. I thought they were going to do Anthony Smith versus Russian Anthony Smith after the Russian Anthony Smith's last fight, but it looks like not, dude. We get Anthony Smith versus Vitor Petrino, dude. UFC 301, May 4th. That's going to be in Brazil. Thoughts on that? Man, that's uh, that's brutal. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how many more times I'm going to be able to pick against Vitor Petrino and be wrong. Uh, Anthony Smith is my guy, but man, that's a uh, whoo, that's a that's a tough fight for Anthony Smith. Not gonna lie, yeah, it for sure is, dude. For sure. Uh, we've got Grant Dawson versus Joe Selecki, UFC 302, June 1st. You care about that one? Uh, nope, okay. Um, Josh Freeman is out, which he should be out of the UFC, but he's not. Dylan Budka steps in to now face Cesar Almeida. You care about that one, or do you even know who either of those guys are? Not a clue of either right. of either or. Right. Fair enough. Uh, Jose Johnson is out, and Josh Van steps in to face Lucas Ro Rocha, Roca. I don't know who that is. UFC Vegas 90, April 6th. You care about that one? And that's our last one. 
Uh, yeah, Josh Van. Hey, I uh, I was actually just uh, you know, we were thinking I was talking about uh, flyweight contenders with uh with the dude I know, and we were actually talking about like uh the man Josh Van's the guy on the come up, and yeah, I'm I'm excited about him. Uh, taking a final short notice might be a little ill advised, but hey, if uh he's looking for an extra payday, I mean the dude's good, man, and he's fun to watch. So yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be looking forward to it. All right, all right. Sounds good, dude. So with that being said, let me get the fight card pulled up here and get our banner changed and see if we have any comments that anyone has anything to say about the fight announcements before we move on. Jesus, this computer, dude. It's Not the greatest card this fight. weekend either. Not yeah, the greatest you, card. We're just coming you, off a banger of a pay-per-view, but... Yeah, you are correct indeed. I believe that's where we was at. Okay, so that's where we're at. Um, okay, we were here. Yeah. So you probably saw the uh, the X-rays of JDM. So uh, Daniel Vasquez going for Jalen versus Moicano. I didn't realize uh, they were in the same weight class. Yeah, they are both one fifty five, dude. Uh, Nathan trained in the UFC, baby. <laughs> indeed, Clinton <laughs> uh, ripped him, Elliot. Uh, just put a Tatsu Tara going out of 10 like five days ago. That's what's up, brother. Good card. Good card. Uh, yeah. So, oh, I got the card up. I thought I shared what I guess I did. What is happening? That's KSW92. What's happening, dear Rose? Is it not on the Looks screen? Like you're having... uh, no, I did not see it. Oh, okay, I don't know what happened, dude. It's like a shiny. Come game on, you got this. Yeah, I don't know what this thing's doing today. I clicked. I keep clicking the thing, and it keeps taking me to KSW ninety two. Tapology's uh, trying to fight me today. Is that not what we're reviewing this weekend? I thought we, we are were. Not. I thought we were here to talk about KS, KSW. We are not, D Rose. As much as I know you would like it. Holy smokes. I finally got it to work. Gee whiz, dude. Gotta love technology. And I'm getting old, too. So I'm starting to feel like the adults when like we were kids, dude, that, you know, they're like, how do you get this to work? And you just, like, turn it oh. off and turn it back on. You got your glasses <laughs> on, too. You're going to be, like, up on the computer screen, like, lifting your yeah, dude. glasses up it's and kind of reading nuts. shit. It's going to be nuts, dude. So anyway, now that we've got that figured out, welcome to what I'm sure the majority of you came here to hear. If you didn't just stumble here by accident, I don't know why you'd be here I'm trying to listen to this fight. But hey, we are here to talk about Tai Tuivasa versus Marcin Tybura this weekend, Saturday, March 16th, 2024, happening at 4 p.m. on the East Coast time going to be taking place at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada. We've got 13 fights, D-Rose. And in the main event this weekend, we've got Ty Bam Bam Tuivasa taking on Marcin Tiber Tybora. We've got Brian the Butcher Battle taking on Angelusa. We've got Kennedy the African Savage in Zechiku taking on O Vince, OSP, St. Pru, dude. Dude, the, uh, I mean, he's still pretty much making a run for the title at this point, you know, fighting on the feature fight of the night. But anyway, we've got C-Rod, Christian Rodriguez taking on Isaac Dolgarian. We've got Penny Kianzad taking on Macy Chiasson. We've got GM Round 3, Gerald Mirashart taking on Brian Bam Bam Barbarina. Dude, UFC keeps putting Brian Barbarina and Tai Tuivasa on the same card quite often, huh? Because they have the same fight. Uh, well, they keep putting... Uh... Brian Barbarina against wrestlers, too. And that's also annoying. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got Mike Davis taking on Natan Levy. We've got Josie Ann Nunez, the no-neck Josie Ann Nunez, taking on the track star that is Chelsea Chandler, Stockton Zone, dude. That's going to be an interesting one to talk about. We've got Ode Osborne taking on Jafel Fiello. We've got Tiago Moises taking on Mitch Ramirez. We've got Josh Kula Kulibal taking on newcomer Danny Silva. We've got Corey Poppins McKenna taking on Jacqueline and Marim in our first fight of the night. We do have Chad and Helliger taking on Harlampos Gregorio. So, yeah, dude, uh, what an interesting 
night of fights we have here. What's your grade on the fight night card in the Apex as a whole, though, D-Rose? Uh, rough one, man. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I mean, coming off of, a, a like I said, a banger pay-per-view. So it's not like we can really complain with the UFC. But, um, yeah, this one... I mean, gotta say, like it's a best. solid D. You're like it's a solid D. <laughs> a D plus. I'll give it. Oh, let's let's go a good D plus on here. But yeah, it's it's a rough one this weekend, boys. Yeah, it is indeed a rough one. So let me check to make sure we don't have anything. Uh, we got Lush taking notes before we start. Appreciate you, Lush. You are the man keeping track of our picks. So with that being said, first fight of the night: Chad and Helliger, the monster, taking on Harlampos Gregorio. Uh, the ferocious, uh, yeah, dude from, from Cyprus. Anyway, um, anyway, and Helliger is 12 and seven overall won three of his last five, but lost his last two fights to Alatong Haley and Jose Johnson via submission. Before that, he did uh, get a UFC win in Jesse Schrader and one on the contender series while, uh, Gregorio has only won on the contender series against Cameron Smotherwin. Round one knockout. I remember that fight happening. Um, here's the thing. Chad and Helliger D Rose is 37 years old. He is uh five foot six and a 64 inch reach, while Gregorio is uh 31 years old, five foot seven and a 67 inch reach. Currently, odds for this fight are a minus 174 for Gregorio and a plus 136 for Ann Helliger. D Rose, I am gonna take the Although he hasn't won but one time in his first UFC fight, I'm going to take the UFC vet, the underdog, Chad and Helliger, to defeat the UFC newcomer, uh, Gregorio, simply because I, I, I remember looking up a few of his fights when he fought on the Contender Series, and I didn't think he was that good. I picked him to lose on the Contender Series, and he was a pretty big dog on the Contender Series against Cameron Smotherman, and he smoked Cameron Smotherman in the first round. And then now he's this basically two to one favorite. Mm, I'll I'll pass, dude. I'll, I'll I'll pass. Give me the UFC vet, the underdog, Chad and Helliger, to get the dub via decision. Which way are you going here, man? Uh, yeah, I think uh, this one, as far as betting wise, I'm I'm definitely staying away from it. Uh, but I do think it, it, Chad and Helliger. I think I picked him in the Jose Johnson fight, his last fight, and uh, he pretty much got a. Uh, I'm not gonna say he got smoked, but he ended up getting getting wrestled and then ended up getting uh, taken out. And Jose Johnson, just in my opinion, just not that good, man. Uh, so yeah, I, I I don't know if Andy Helliger is really that that UFC level yet. I know he's a little bit more unknown for uh, Gregorio, but um, he's on a roll right now, man. So I'm gonna say he's going to continue that streak. Uh, let's go, uh, Gregorio here. All right, in our first different pick of the night, D Rose on the favorite, the UFC newcomer, Harlampos Gregorio, and I am on the vet, the underdog, Chad and Helliger. So next fight of the night, going to be an interesting one, dude. This one's this one's kind of hard to call. We've got Corey Poppins McKenna taking on uh, Jackie Jacqueline Amarine, dude. Corey Poppins McKenna is eight and two overall, one four of her last five. Her only loss with that whole fight was to Elise Reed via split decision where her path to victory was there, dude. Take Elise Ryle, Elise Reed down, and she just did it. <laughs> I don't know why, dude. She just did it almost two years ago. But Corey McKenna is still very young, so still ever improving. Anyway, Jacqueline Emerim, 7-1 overall. Her only loss is to her UFC debut against Sam Page, Sam Huge. So both have a loss in their last five. Currently, odds for this fight are plus 100 for Jacqueline Amarim and a minus 128 for Corey Poppins McKenna. Interesting, dude, because I looked at the odds on Sunday, and I think Corey McKenna was a plus 180 underdog. So the odds have not flipped completely, but flipped to where Corey McKenna is a favorite now. Anyway, Corey McKenna is 24 years old, five foot three. 58 inch reach, 58. While Jacqueline Amarim is 28 years old, five foot three, and a 68 inch reach. So Jacqueline Amarim will have a bag, basically a 10 inch reach advantage over Corey McKenna. <coughs> but I don't think it matters because Jacqueline Amarim doesn't use her striking. She's a grappler into the max. She's going to try to get you down and submit you. That's what she does. She's a world champion, Brazilian, 
Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu um, black belt. As for Corey McKenna, uh, she doesn't have the longest arms in the world, but I feel like in her last fight against – did she fight Cheyenne Bellismas last? Yeah, dude. She beat her via decision, dude, and she didn't even wrestle her. She outstruck Cheyenne Bellismas. And that being said, Corey McKenna has got the better striking. She might be small. She might be little. But I believe she's got the better striking and the better wrestling. So if she doesn't get caught in a sub, dude, give me Corey McKenna to uh, to probably win this fight three or decision because Jackie likes the gas a little bit, dude. So, yeah, give me the slight favorite, Corey McKenna, to win this fight three or decision. Which way are you going here, D-Rose? Yeah, I'll probably end up putting Corey McKenna in a parlay. I, I couldn't have explained the fight better in, in terms of how I see it, uh, better than you just did there. I do think that McKenna, you know, she's just, just a little bit more well-rounded than ja uh, than Jacqueline there. And I do think that uh, Corey McKenna, I think you can see a little bit more uh, wrestling there as well. Uh, even though, uh, of course, we know uh, Jacqueline has the, uh, the jiu-jitsu there. Uh, like I said, Corey McKenna, you know, she is able to uh, use her top control. She she still trains the team Alpha, am I correct? Um, correct. Yeah, she uh, yeah she still trains with them as well. So I know Uriah has been working on her wrestling a lot as well and everything. So, um, yeah, I think Corey McKenna gets it done here by decision. All right, all right. But please play that three or decision because Jackie does like to gas. And I think Corey Poppins has that one head and arm triangle where Chick got her arm like, stuck in so keep that in mind that three or, or like or decision keep that to where you know at, just to cover it just a little bit we got long care pros llc saying keep up the good work guys we appreciate you stopping by and for your kind words brother uh we got papa chuck in the room as well d rose i don't know if you yeah, saw him papa well. chuck, man, dude. <laughs> and he is going yeah. give me poppins all day how can you arm bar a t-rex <laughs> she does have those little arms dude she does have those little arms. So me and D-Rose are both on Corey Poppins, McKenna in that fight. So up next, we do have Joshua Kula, Kulibau, taking on Danny El Puma Silva. So Joshua Kulibau in his last five fights is three wins, one loss, and one draw. His last loss was to Lerone Murphy via unanimous decision. I think you picked them in that one, right, D-Rose? And I went yeah, Lerone man. Murphy. Yeah, close fight, dude. I feel like that could have went either way. And before that, I believe he had a choke over Melsic Bogdasar. Yeah, rear naked choke over Melsic Bogdasar. As where Danny Silva has fought, hasn't fought in the UFC yet and uh, got a win over Angel Pacheco on the Contender Series. <clears throat> Currently, odds for this are minus 184 for Joshua Kulibau and a plus 142 for Danny Silva. Josh Kulibau. 29 years old, 5 foot 10, 73 inch reach, while Danny Silva is 27 years old, 5 foot 11, and a 70 inch reach. I'm going to be honest. I wish I looked more into Danny Silva, dude, but I think this is maybe a late notice replacement. But Josh Kulabout is good. I don't want to say he. Yeah, I'm going to say it, D Rose. I think he fights like he's invincible, but he can be hurt to the body if that makes sense. Like, he f he has a good chin, and he you can't really drop him, but I kind of feel like I kind of seen him get hurt to the body m more than one occasion. So if, if Danny Silva can put out some good body work, I believe that he can probably defeat Josh Kulibau. But Kuya Kulibau got some UFC experience now and taking on the UFC newcomer. He is eight and one. I believe he's going to hand him his second loss uh, of his career. Give me Joshua Kulabau to defeat uh, Danny Silva. But as I said, I wish I looked into him more. My pick may change before Friday, but yeah, give me Josh Kulabau to probably win via finish just because UFC newcomer, dude, what's your thoughts here? Yeah, I think uh, I, I am with you as far as not doing my my full research into into Danny Silva, but um, but I have been one who's bit uh, who's picked uh, cool about in a couple of his fights, and uh, but I, I do like his style, I like his pressure, I like his I like his wrestling. Um, he uses his boxing well to uh, to set up his wrestling as well. Um, as you said, I, I thought that Lamar Murphy fight was close, and I thought it could have went either way, but uh, Lamar Murphy he he's super tough as well, and we've seen. Uh, you know, some of the promise that he's shown in the octagon as well. So for cool about to kind of, you know, show that, you know, he can keep it close with some of those guys. Um, I think it goes to show his skill. I like the experience that he has here. 
And um, yeah, I want to go Joshua Cool about here, probably by decision, but. For me, it had them on ESPN at minus 180. I mean, as far as just like a parlay or whatever, a money line, I, I'd like to throw that in a parlay money line. All right. All right. Fair enough. The Rose and myself are both on Josh Kulabau this week. So up next, uh, we do have Tiago Moises taking on the fight stalker, Mitch Ramirez. Dude, interesting. Uh, Tiago uh, Moises is... That is what it says, dude. The fight stalker, hmm. Mitch Ramirez. Uh, anyway, uh, Tiago Moises, 17 and 7 overall. Out of his last five fights, he has won two of them. Last lost six months ago to Benoit Saint Denis via ground and pound, and then two wins over Mikel Mikel Costa. Good fighter. Uh, just fights down at 145. And Christos Giagos, and then two years and three months ago, lost to Joel Alvarez. Huge at 155. And obviously, your champion is not Makachev. So, Tiago Moises isn't losing to bums, dude. Mitch Ramirez uh, fought, lastly, an LFA uh, one uh, via hooks in, uh, I don't know. So I think this fight is also short notice as well, D-Rose. So Tiago Moises, uh, 28 years old, 5 foot 9 and a 70 and a half inch reach, while Mitch Ramirez is 31 years old, 5 foot 11 and a 71 inch reach. Um... And we don't have odds for this fight. So give me uh, Tiago Moises to submit Rich, Ramir- Rich Ramirez. Mitch Ramirez. <laughs> I said Rich Mamir. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, dude. Mitch <laughs> Ramirez. Yeah. Give me uh, Tiago Moises to uh, submit Rich M- Ramirez in probably second or third round. Maybe even the first round. I don't know. Tiago Moises via submission. That's the way I'm going. Which way are you going here, Diros? Um, so yeah, I, so there are odds. Um, FanDuel has Tiago Moises minus 430. Uh, Mitch Ramirez at plus 300. Where's it at? Uh, it's at the it looks like it's at the oh, the it's like way, pad. way down. It's like right bottom. above GM3. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm like, dude, I'm like at the yeah, like the Josh Kulabau, which is like four from the beginning. That's where it should be at. So who knows, right? But um, but yeah, so. Mitch Ramirez, it looks like I'm curious to see if this fight even happens. It looks like a lot of his fights are actually even at welterweight, and he's going to be taking this fight on short notice. So that's got me a little bit concerned for this fight even happening. So I, I would say, in terms of betting, uh, if you're going to bet this fight, I would probably wait until the night of just to make sure. But, um, and, and I, to me, I think Tiago Moises, you know, he, he trains at ATT, I think, you know, clean, uh, good boxing, good. He's got his wrestling has gotten better as he's been in the UFC, and we already know the jujitsu threat that he has. So, um, yeah, I think Tiago Moises gets it done if this fight happens. But I say Tiago Moises gets it done by submission. All right, fair enough. Me and Dero's both on Tiago Moises via submission this week. Up next, an interesting one, dude. Uh, two pretty, I feel like. People opposite in their UFC careers. O'Day Osborne been in the UFC a little bit now. Kind of did what he is probably going to do, dude. As where Jafel Filo, the pastor, if you will, uh, is coming into the UFC kind of making waves and only 30 years old. So let's get into it. The Jamaican sensation, uh, O'Day Osborne, is 12 and 6, lost two of his last five to Asu Amabayev and Tyson Nam. Be a brutal knockout. That was a cur- I remember that one, dude. He just left there with a fly and knee and got absolutely clubbed by Tyson Nam, dude. Oh, goodness. And he kept throwing the fly and knee. Anyway, went over Charles Johnson, uh, Zaruk uh, Adashev, KO, and CJ Vergara decision. As were Jafel Filo, came into the UFC uh, and lost to Muhammad Makaya, but put Muhammad Makaya in a nasty knee bar and then has a win over Daniel Barros. I believe that was a round one, a round two arm triangle, dude, but he got dropped and stood back up, took Daniel Barros down, and then arm triangle him while hurt, dude. So rather interesting. Currently, odds for this fight are minus 184, Jafel Filo, and plus 142. Oday Osborne. Oday Osborne, 32 years old, 5 foot 7 and a 73 inch reach, while Jafel Filo is 30 years old, 5 foot 7 and a 68 and a half inch reach. D Rose, if Oday Osborne didn't love getting submitted when he loses, I'd pick him, but <laughs> I just can't, dude. 
Uh, I've seen Jaffa Filo hurt and get a submission, a takedown and a submission still against a good wrestler that was Daniel Barrios too. So give me Jaffa Filo to submit Ode Osborne probably in the second round. Which way are you going here, man? Uh, yeah, this is a this is a tough fight to pick because you know I like uh you know I like Ode Osborne, but I do understand uh. You know the the jujitsu threat that uh, Jafel Fiyo brings, and you know just as far as uh, him being able to get a submission from anywhere, and we remember that knee bar from around the world that he put on Muhammad Makayev that he almost ended up putting like Makayev's toes in his own mouth with his leg straight. So that's just like let's just put that in perspective about how far he had that knee twisted. Um, but honestly, I do. I think I like the just the, the veteran experience with uh, with the UFC with Ode Osborne here. Uh, I know that he doesn't necessarily train with Sarah Longo all the time. I know he trains at a syndicate for the most part, but does get a little bit of work in every once in a while with Aljamain Sterling and the crew up there. So I think his wrestling is going to be a little bit tight. And um, yeah, I like the experience here. I think as long as he doesn't put himself in any dumb positions, I think Filio will give up uh, certain positions to try to get a submission on the ground. I think you can see a little bit of ground control here from Ode Osborne, but I think Ode Osborne gets it done. All right. I believe that is our second different pick of the night where D Rose is going Ode Osborne and I am going Jafel Filo. So up next, we do have my personal main event of the evening. The no neck of Josie and Josie Nunez taking on Stockton's own 209 represent. She's a runner. She's a track star baby. Chelsea Chandler, dude. Uh, <laughs> Josie and Nunez, 10 and 1. Chelsea Chandler, 5 and 2. Josie and Nunez out of her last five fights is 5 and 0. Oh, and Chelsea Chandler is obviously 4 and 1 with that run that she did away from Norma Dumont after getting clobbered, dude. Imagine she went on to win that fight, dude. How crazy that would have been. Currently, uh, odds for this are a minus 150 for Josie Ann Nunez and a plus 118 for Chelsea Chandler. Josie Ann Nunez, 30 years old, five foot two and a 67 inch reach. And keep in mind that she's been fighting at 145 and a half. 40, 145.5 was the last time she weighed in. Anyway, she's going to be taking on Chelsea Chandler. And uh, yeah, dude, <laughs> Chelsea Taylor, 33 years old, also last weighed in at 145 and a half, um, five foot eight and a 68 inch reach. D Rose, and uh, I don't know if this fight's going to be happening because if you look at the top here, it says it's going to be taking place at 135. I don't know if Chelsea Chandler can make 135 pounds unless she is in serious shape. You know I love me some Josie Ann Nunez, dude. And if she drops one of them things on you, dude, you might get knocked out, man. And it's just <laughs> – I just love seeing women with knockout power. Nothing makes me happier, dude, than seeing a small woman the size of Josie Ann Nunez or Jessica Andrade or, you know, Denise e. Gomes just – have the knockout power to just knock one of these girls' heads into the stands. One of my personal favorite things, dude. But with that being said, if Chelsea Chandler gets Josie Ann Nunez down, dude, I feel like she's just going to ground and pound her. She's so small, dude. But I don't know if this fight even happens and because it's supposed to be taking place at 135, man. This could be a catch weight at 140, maybe even 145. But – my heart says, let's go, Josie Ann Nunez. You know, let's drop one of them things on her. Just pick her because you want her, dude. But my stomach tells me Chelsea Chandler comes out there, takes down Josie Ann Nunez, and just either lays on her all three or ends up ground and pound her and just getting her out of there. So give me the slight dog, the plus 118. She's a runner. She's a track star baby. Give me Chelsea Chandler to win this fight, unfortunately, dude. Which way are you going here? Um, yeah, I think you, again, you broke this fight down perfectly to, to basically the way I was going to explain it, man. I, I do think that, uh, Chelsea Chandler, I think we could, to, I think to kind of put this fight to perspective here, Chelsea Chandler was able to take down, uh, Julia Stolia Ranka with ease at 145. And now we see Julia Stolia Ranka fighting at 125. Um, now we do know that Josie Ann Nunez has, again, the power in her hands. She could put anybody out. 
And if she hits Chelsea Chandler with one of the things, I'm pretty sure that uh, Chelsea Chandler is going to be going to running across the octagon again. And uh, probably looking to run out the door this time, not looking to only just run into the fence and stop. But uh, but I do think just as far as size wise, yeah, I just think that uh, I think Chelsea Chandler is going to be a little bit too much. I think she's going to be able to get the takedowns, uh, maybe get some ground and pound, uh, maybe a decision here. But uh, but I do see Chelsea Chandler using her wrestling here, using her size advantage. I mean, what she's got a six inch height advantage on her. Um, I'm going to imagine that she's going to have some natural weight over uh over Josie and Nunez as well. So, yeah, I think uh, Chelsea Chandler gets it done. Upsetting there, dude, because I would love to see Josie and Nunez drop one of them on her and then just see Chelsea Chandler take off running the, the other way. Dude, I would, I would laugh so hard, dude. She takes off running like fucking shaggy. <laughs> Scooby dude. Like, she's like, Zoink, Scooby. let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, Papa Truck dropping some knowledge on us. Fun fact. Mitch's nickname is an ode to Richard Ramirez, an infamous serial murderer with a moniker of the Night Stalker. So Mitch Ramirez, the Fight Stalker. Makes sense, though, right? Weird-ass shit, though. <laughs> Probably go by Mitchard instead of Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, that's, Chuck. that's weird as hell, though. But, uh, yeah, in- interesting nonetheless. Yeah, so me and D-Rose both on unfortunately chelsea chandler i was hoping and uh, dude i want to pick josie and nunez there maybe if we only have two dude we'll go back and i'll switch that one josie and nunez but i don't know dude up next dude uh dude we have mike davis fighting this week holy shit i haven't seen him fighting like a year but that's what happens we got the beast boy mike davis taking on lethal natan or natan lethal levy dude um, Mike Davis, Beast Boy, is 10-2 and two overall out of his last five fights. He is 4-1. and one. A year and five months ago, he fought Vicious Law Borishev. And then probably two years and five months ago, he fought someone else. Uh, three years and one month ago, he fought Mason Jones. Four years, four months ago, he fought Thomas Gifford and, you know, lost to Gilbert Burns basically five years ago, dude. Mike Davis is good, dude. He just fights like once every like two fucking years. And it's like, hey, man, um, you're good. Get in the kind of fight. Show people that you're good. He's going to be taking on Nathan Levy, 8-1 and one overall. Also, someone that doesn't fight too often. Uh, Gennaro Valdez uh, win a year ago, a year and 10 months ago. Mike Breeden win, the Barker, you, you remember? Now cut from the USC and then lost to Hoffa Garcia. Dude, and Hoffa Garcia just, just wrestled him, dude. Anyway, currently odds for this are minus 400 for Mike Davis. Holy shit. Plus 285 for Nathan Levy. Mike Davis, 31 years old, six foot, 72 inch reach, and Natan Levy, 32 years old, five foot nine, and a 72 inch reach, dude. Uh, yeah, I, w- I mean, if the odds on the screen were minus 250 plus 205, I'd like, you know, I'd say Mike Davis, solid, solid parlay piece, dude. But minus 400 now, I would say, I don't even know how much that's going to add, man. Like, I think he wins the fight. I think Mike Davis is a fantastic fighter. He just doesn't fight often. He's smart, very fi- high fight IQ. Uh, trains at I think Tiger Muay Thai or like Bang Tao or one of those and is like um, off time and then trains in Florida at Fusion XL getting ready for uh, his fights dude so I got Mike Davis winning this fight any way he wants to win this fight to be honest uh, which way are you going here man uh yeah I think he's just the uh, I think Mike Davis is the the more all around better athlete than uh than Natan Levy now Natan Levy I think I've I've picked against him in a couple of fights and he has burned me before, um but I I think his his striking is just a little bit behind, uh and I think uh, Mike Davis we know he's got the power good boxing he can also use his wrestling as well and he's a uh, big strong dude for the weight class so yeah I think Mike Davis gets it done. All right, and Papa Chuck saying Mike Davis on the leap year fight <laughs> fight schedule. <laughs> Pretty All much right. how it feels yeah. at this point. <laughs> All right, dude. So up next, um, yeah, dude, GM three taking on uh, Brian Bam Bam Barbarina. So Gerald Mer- Gerald Mearshart, GM three is 35 and 17 overall out of his last five fights. He has won two of them with a loss in his last fight over Andre Petrovsky. Close. Split decision fight where I thought GM3 won that fight and actually showed some pretty clean boxing in that fight. Lost to Joe Pfeiffer, KO round one. Uh, knocked out Bruno Silva, or I guess knocked down Bruno Silva, and then submitted him in the third round. 
lost to Kristoff Jockos via decision in a terrible fight, and then uh, one over Dustin Stoll Foods. Uh, yeah. Brian Barberina, on the other hand, 18 and 11 overall out of his last fights, last five fights, lost uh, three of them, lost to Mokwin Muradov via decision, uh, lost to Gunnar Nelson via armbar, and then lost to Rafael Dos Anjos via rear naked choke. One against Robbie Lawler uh, almost two years ago via knockout. And then Matt Brown via split decision almost two years ago. Currently, odds for this fight are minus 250 for Jiro Mirchart and plus 190 for Brian Barberina. Jiro Mirchart, 36 years old, six foot one, 77 and a half inch reach, while Brian Barberina is 34 years old, six foot, and a 72 inch reach. I'm still confused why Brian Barberian decided to move up to 185, dude. It's like, it wasn't like he was like shredded at 170, could barely make 170. It's like, bro, you just need to get on a better diet and s- stop eating fast food and trying to fight at 170. Like, you know, it's like, I just, you know, he was always had a little bit, had a little bit of chunk to him, never had any abs on him or anything like that. So, if anything, you'd think he'd get disciplined and move down to 155, dude, but. That ain't what happened, dude. Brian Barberina moved up to 155, and although he is durable, as you say, tougher than an old leather boot, GM3, as I said, in his last fight, showed some pretty improved boxing. And aside from that, uh, that's all Brian Barberina has in round one, and he'll put the pressure on you, but, you know, he's getting a little bit older, and he's going to be at a size disadvantage here, dude. So I suspect... What happens here is what happens in every GM3 fight, which is why I call him GM round three, dude. I suspect round one to be rather close. I suspect round two, GM3, to show why he is a natural 185er, be able to just find his range, use his new improved boxing skills, and maybe get Brian Barberina down. And in round three, for GM3 to end up hurting Brian Barberina and end up uh, just doing the club and sub, dude. So give me round three submission for Gerald Mearshart here. That's a long-winded say, a long-winded way of saying GM3 round three. <laughs> uh, yeah, and no, and I, I'm, I'm so upset about this this fight because, again, Brian Barberina, he is an action fighter. He is there to bring the pain. He is not there to be wrestling and rolling around on the ground and trying to defend off takedowns and trying to defend off chokes. This man is a warrior. Put him out there with a striker and let him go out there and bang and see if he dies or kills the other person. But that's where he brings out his best fights. And when you put him up against a submission artist like GM3, I mean, uh, RDA got a submission on him. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he moved up literally. <laughs> I, know. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like it. Cause other than that, there's no other reason for him to move up to, uh, to middleweight. And GM and, uh, comes. <laughs> yeah, bro. yeah, GM, uh, like one minute. <laughs> GM, GM point five versus comes up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, GM three, as soon as that, that problem <laughs> submission I'm, I'm definitely going to be hammering that home so i don't catch the line too late uh yeah i think jam3 gets a submission here yeah I, uh well, elegant fandle opens up that round two round three sub prop i'm going to be all over that uh this week dude me and d rose both on gm3 up next we've got Penny kianza taking on macy chess and once again supposed to be happening at or two once again, supposed to be happening at 135, dude. But I don't think Macy Chasson can make 135 pounds. So I don't think this fight happens. Or if it does, it ain't going to be at 135. Anyway, we've got Bonsai, Penny Kianzad, 16 and 7, taking on Macy Chasson, 8 and 3 overall. Currently, odds for this fight are plus 196 for Penny Kianzad and a minus 260 for Macy Chasson. Penny Kianzad, 32 years old, 5 foot 7, and a 66 inch reach, while uh, Macy Chiasson uh, is 32 years old, 5'11", and a 72-inch reach. D-Rose, if this fight happens, um, I got Macy Chiasson being the bigger, stronger, more physical girl that would just uh, take Penny Kianzad down and will have the longer reach at distance, throwing uh, jabs and front kicks. So give me uh, Macy Chiasson to win this fight via decision if it happens. If it happens, and or you know, Panic Kianza might land an uh, upkick offer back to the liver. 
you know, not makes each yes an out. So who knows? Is this not a uh, rematch? So yeah, this is this is two, 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 two. two? really two. Um, yeah, I I think uh, again, Macy she has on. You know, she's the she's a more lengthy lengthier fighter. Uh, I think she's got a little bit more well-rounded tools than uh, Penny Kianza, too. Uh, she can use her distance very well with her boxing, uh, her kicks. And uh, as you said, she's got good submissions, which she takes you down as well. I think uh, Kianza is just a little bit more one-dimensional when it comes to the grappling. And uh, I think Macy Chaston is able to uh, kind of use a little bit of her full game. Uh I know Kansas got some got some striking, but a lot of her performances, I, I've seen a lot of her wrestling, and I feel like if you're going to bring it into Macy Chiasson's world, I think that's where uh, Macy Chiasson's going to shine. And I think uh, I, I think Macy Chiasson gets it done here, uh, as you said. But I, I don't know if I'm going to put in any best slips because I'm not too confident the fight's going to happen either. Yeah, and then as uh, a shadow asking, uh, when you bet on someone and they don't make weight, how does that affect the bet? Well, if the fight still happens then um your bet's still on but if they miss weight and they cancel the fight then your bet's just voided so if you parlay it you get new odds uh and they're just not as good as they were uh when you did bet so uh yeah the fight still takes place or you can cash out if they don't make weight it's up to you man but usually uh, i'm i usually wait until after weigh-ins to make the majority of my bets anyway but uh, me and dero's both on macy chess and they're D. Rose, up next, we have one that I am interested in quite a bit, and this is one that I see a lot of people <coughs> back and forth on this week. We do have C-Rod, Christian Rodriguez, taken on the Midwest Choppa, Isaac Dolgarian, dude. Uh, C-Rod, Christian Rodriguez, 10-1 and one overall. Uh, three fights, a uh, win over Cameron Scheinman, a uh, win over Raul Rosas Jr., and a win over Joshua Weems, lost to Jonathan J.S. Pier- Pierce in his UFC debut, and then uh, out of the UFC for Isaac Dolgarian. Uh, Francis Marshall, TKO, round one in his last fight, and before that, uh, wasn't in the UFC. So he is 6-0 and currently. So Christian Rodriguez, he is 26 years old, five foot seven, and a 71 inch reach. While the Midwest Choppa, Isaac Dolgarian, is 27 years old, five foot seven, and a 71 inch reach. I'm not sure if I said it. Currently, odds for this fight are plus 154 for Christian Rodriguez and a minus 200 for Isaac Dolgarian, dude. And it makes sense. Uh, this is a weight class up from where Christian Rodriguez fights at. I believe UFC is punishing him because. You're just missing weight down at Bantamweight, defeating the prospects. So we're going to make you fight up at 145 and give you one of the 145-pound prospects saying, hey, beat this guy. Isaac Dolgarian is an absolute animal. In his last fight, you know, it was quick. But Francis the Fire Marshal, dude, is tough. And he went out there, took him down, and beat the shit out of Fire Marshal, dude. So I think this is a solid play, dude. Uh, Give me Isaac Dolgarian to probably – Finish C Rod uh, in this fight, but you know, at a minus two hundred, I think Isaac Dolgarian is a solid parlay piece this week. So give me Isaac Dolgarian to defeat C Rod. Which way are you going here, D Rose? <clears throat> yeah, I've been so up and down on this fight just because. Uh, I know that you you're said, not you... the biggest C Rod fan because you always pick the prospect against them. <laughs> yeah, well, that and I still think that Cameron Simon won that fight. Like I still think that Cameron Simon won that fight. He missed weight and he didn't win the fight, in my opinion. Um, but there is one thing that I will note for him is that he is he's very tough. I mean, I thought there were some shots in that Cameron Simon fight where I mean there were a couple of question mark kicks and some good one twos that Cameron Simon was landed. And I did think that Christian Rodriguez was able to um, you know, weather the storm, and he is pretty tough, man. So, um, Isaac Dogarian, as we've seen, he's gotten all of what is it all first round finishes so far. So, uh, yeah, no one can stand in there with him, but man, I'm just, I'm just, I also curious. believe he's a uh, like two time like state champion, like a like fucking wrestler, too, dude. Like, it's it's absolutely nuts. Like, like maybe like national champion or like. Like uh, or just some shit like that too, dude. Yeah, it's absolutely but I, crazy. Yeah, but I'm curious to see if he's he he hasn't gone out of the first round in any of his fights. 
Um, what is it going to look like when he's actually pressured a little bit? Um, I mean, we did see Christian Rodriguez get out wrestled by JSP Pierce, but uh, but yeah, I think Christian Rodriguez does have some ability, some skills, man. And I, I think I'm going to actually take the shot on the underdog here, man. I think I like uh, Christian Rodriguez here, uh, Isaac Delgari, just too much unknown as far as what's going to happen if someone's able to push him. And I think Christian Rodriguez, we've seen that toughness out of him so far to show that he's not going to go away without a fight. So I think that's going to be enough to – that and his UFC experience is going to be enough to will him to victory here. This ain't even mine no more. And it's just sitting here, D-Rose. I'm surprised you didn't even say anything after I ate the beans, like get that pick champ out of there. That ain't yours no more. So D-Rose – is a new pick champ this week. I forgot to I forgot to say that. So, sorry about that, D Rose. You know, the bean is always... kind of the passing of eating the beans is kind of the passing of the crown. So that's you know that yeah, in it itself just, is uh is a passing crown. Yeah, I, I guess I just got distracted <laughs> with that part. So with our third different pick of the night, D Rose is going to pick Christian Rodriguez for the first time, dude. And this is going to be like your Cody Durden, dude. You're finally going to pick him, and he. And he's gonna lose. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be Cody Brunson. Yeah, no, like like my it. Cody Durden dude, because oh, I always pick yeah. against them, and I finally picked him, and he lost. I was like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah you know, or so. Brunson with me. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Every time I pick Brunson to win, he loses. Every time I pick him to lose, he wins. It, I mean, I can't win with this guy, man. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we are different on that fight, D Rose on uh, C Rod. I am on Isaac Dolgarian. So up next, dude, this is this is going to be possibly fight of the night, dude. When when this when these fighters start walking out to the octagon, make sure you're setting down, dude, because this is going to be 15 minutes of sheer entertainment. Uh, and if you can't tell, I am being sarcastic. We've got the African Savage Kennedy and Zetchuku taking on. OSP, Ovince St. Prue, dude. And OSP walks to the cage and, dude, I know it was everywhere this past week, the PFL fight, right? With the dude just getting head kicked, right? Yeah, where he just kind of like. Is that not like, how fucking OSP fights every goddamn time? Like, it's that's OSP, dude. I'm like, when did OSP start fighting the PFL? Because. That's how OSP fights, dude. I feel like at any point, dude, someone can just fucking throw something and it would just clobber him, dude. It's like OSP walks in the octagon. Like, I'll walk in my bathroom in the morning when I just woke up. I'm, like, drowsy and shit. I'm like, <sighs> like let me go in there and pee. OSP walks in the octagon like, like that, dude. It's like, why are you fighting at this point, dude? It's like... It's not even for a paycheck. It's like someone told him that, hey, man, you, you have to go get in the octagon tomorrow night. He's like, oh, man, I don't want to. And they're like, you have to, oh, Vince. And he's like, okay. like, and, that, and that's how he goes in the octagon, dude. I just – I don't understand why he's even still fighting, dude. But anyway, before I rant anymore, the African Savage, Kenny and Zetchku, 12 and 4 overall, lost his last fight against uh, Dustin Jacoby via vicious round one knockout. And me and D Rose were both on Kennedy, and I watched him live in person get absolutely snoozed in Nashville, dude. Upsetting to see because I had a bet on him, dude. Won three fights in a row Devin Clark, uh, Iwan Kutalaba, and Carl Roberson, while OSP, uh, out of his last five, somehow won two the shell of Mauricio Shogun, who uh, almost two years ago, uh, and then uh, f almost four years ago, knocked out Alonzo Minifield, as crazy as it sounds. But uh, his three losses are Jamal Hill knockout, Tanner Bozer knockout, and then uh, lastly, a year ago, lost to Felipe Lenz via knockout, dude, where I feel like he just gets hit and then backs up against the fence and then just stands there like a heavy bag until the ref stops it. Currently, odds for this fight are uh, Kenny and Zetchuku minus 560 favorite. OSP plus 370 dog. Should be plus 3,070 dog because OSP ain't winning this fucking fight. Uh, Kenny and Zetchuku, 6'5", 83-inch uh, reach, 31 years old, while OSP is 40 years old, 6'3", and 80-inch reach. Yeah, I don't know if I need to even say it, but I'm picking Kenny and Zetchuku here. KO round one or two over OSP. I feel like the path is there. You just blitz them, throw punches at them, the ref's going to stop it. Kennedy and Zechku, KO. Uh, which way are you going here, D-Rose? 
Uh, yeah. So this is another one that uh, <laughs> Dero is nah. giving the belt with that pick. Yeah, that with that Isaac pick, he is. Ovin's getting old. I remember the guys around before the internet. <laughs> Dude, I mean, I, I mean, I know a lot of people still always say, "Well, he got to a title fight and he fought John Jones," but dude, that was almost a decade ago, uh, and he's still hanging around, just lingering like that old musty ass fart that just will not go away. <laughs> just that, just that linger that's just in the air, and you're like, "Damn." That fart was an hour ago, and that shit is still lingering around, dude. Like, that's OSP. Walking to the octagon like he's that old person who knows it's about the rain, and his knee starts hurting. Like, he's just walking to the – walking uh, – you know, he's, he he looks like he's grunting when he walks. He, uh, yeah, he's, he's definitely one of those. He's just – I don't know if it's for the paycheck or not as well. I would say it's probably just for the paycheck at this point because – I mean, there ain't shit else left for you to do except for to go out there, unless you enjoy just getting your ass kicked at this point. And, uh, I mean, he he could. I don't know. Uh, am I betting this? No, because Kenny is Ezekiel, another dude who I just cannot seem to call his fight right to save my life. So, uh, way too heavy of a line for me to bet on. Minus, uh, over minus 500. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah are you, like, you going to parlay that? Like, no. Like, you got to parlay a prop. Far, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, but I'm not. I'm not betting the fight at all. I'm. I'm not letting this fight burn me. Um, I Kennedy. If there's one thing I know is that I don't know shit about Kennedy and Zetsuku because every single time I go to call one of his fights, I call it wrong. I'm going to pick Kennedy and Zetsuku, but I am not getting anywhere near this fight betting wise because every one of his fights, I bet I get it wrong. <laughs> Eric Butterbean at just training for a comeback. OSP would be a good match for him probably because he's just gonna fucking stand there. No way I'd, I'd bank on Kennedy to get it done around one. Nah, just because um, I think in his last fight after coming out hot in round one and blitzing Dustin Jacoby, he might be a little bit hesitant. But um, would I – I wouldn't bet the KO two or three prop because I feel like he could do it in one, dude. I'm most confident if I just do the uh, Kennedy KO or like round one, round two prop. Just – just in case, but dude, OSP just is, he just goes in there and stands there at this point. Uh, I think Kennedy starts slow, gets KO'd round one if he doesn't find his distance early. Yeah. But I mean, sure. but I don't even know if like OSP's, <laughs> they, I, I don't know what I can say all about OSP. I'm not saying it's possible, just don't say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got you, brother. And at the end of the day, it's a fist fight and anything can happen. I say that shit every week. Anyone that acts like they're right. 100% of the time, you're just a liar because you're not right 100% of the time. <laughs> it's impossible to be right when it comes to this 100% of the time. Up next, the Rose, we have the co-main event of the evening. We got Brian, the Butcher Battle, taking on the last ninja, Angelusa. Brian Battle is 10-2 uh, and two overall, won four of his last five. Uh, AJ Fletcher sub, <laughs> yay, we're in knockout. <laughs> uh, lost to Renat Fakhradinov up at 185. Uh, defeat Takashi Sato, uh, and then uh, defeat Treshawn Gore. While Angelusa, out of his last five, or uh, Angelusa, 10-3 and three overall, out of his last five, win over Reese McKee via decision, win over A.J. Fletcher via decision, uh, lost to Munir Lazez via decision, uh, law, and then that was out of the UFC, so who cares? Um, currently, odds for this fight are a minus 196 for Brian Battle, plus 152 for Angelusa. Interesting. Brian Battle, 29 years old, six foot one, and a 77 inch reach. While Angelusa, 29 years old, five foot ten, and a 74 inch reach. So, um, yeah, I like Brian Battle to win this fight. Do I like the odds though? I don't feel like he should be that big of a favorite because, uh, you know what? I do like it. Uh yeah, I like Brian Battle here I'll, quite a bit simply because I feel like. Dude, Reese McKee, I feel like is we should know at this point that he's an ass man. And it's like, dude, Angelusa went tooth and nail with Reese McKee in his last fight. And I think Brian Battle just, every time he fights, he just keeps impressing me more and more. And down at 170, dude, he's a problem. I hope that he can make this weight consistently over time, dude, because it looks like it is a very, very, very tough wake up for him down to 170. I don't think Angelusa ever been finished. So give me Brian Battle to uh, win this fight via decision, man. But, you know, 
I don't think Gabe Green got finished much before he decided to ooga booga Brian Battle either. So yeah. Uh yeah, give me Brian Battle to win this fight. Which way are you going here, D Rose? Yeah, but I would say that Angelusa isn't that reckless of a fighter to straight ooga booga him. Now I could <laughs> say that. I could say that. And the next thing you know, he just comes out and tries to ooga booga Gabe Green and the next or he tries to ooga booga Brian Battle. Next thing you know, the fight's over. And Brian Battle lands a big uh big overhand. But uh Bonds Lucy, man, he's tough, dude. And I mean, I picked against him in his last couple fights against Reese McKee and AJ Fletcher, you know, two prospects that were kind of coming up. And uh, you know, he kind of sent both of them back. So uh he is tough, good boxing, uh, you know, built like a brick shit house. I mean, he's gonna be he's gonna be shredded in there. So uh I don't think he's gonna be easy to take down by any means. But I think uh, Brian Battle just – I, I think he's very well-rounded. I don't think he has enough credit for how well-rounded he is. Um, uses his teep kick very well as well. So I think one of the weapons that he can use to maintain his distance is that teep kick to the body. Uh, he's got a pretty good jab as well. Um, and I think he's good in the clinch fighting. Uh, good by throwing knees in the clinch as well. He can get dirty in the clinch. And uh, he's got good wrestling. Don't think he's going to be able to take Angelusa down that much. I think you can see a little bit more of maybe like a, a kick, uh, uh, a kickboxing point fighting type of fight, maybe. But I do think Brian Battle gets it done by decision here. Angelusa is tougher than a uh, than a two dollar stake. So let's go, uh, Brian Battle here by decision. All right, fair enough. Um, you think he has trouble making one seventy, dear Rose? Uh, he seemed to his, his last couple fights. So that is something that I, I do hope that he's able to get corrected. Um, I, I don't think that he's going to continue to keep taking fights at 170 if it's something that he don't think that he's going to make. But um, I got to think if he's still willing to take it at this point that he feels pretty confident that he's going to make it. I agree. I agree. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we've got Give Me the Ooga Booga by Ref Stoppage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> All right. Main event time. If y'all haven't already, please do you boys a favor over here and hit that thumbs up button. We do have Ty Bam Bam Tuivasa taking on Marcin Tiber. Tiber in the main event of the evening, D-Rose. So Ty Tuivasa, 15 and 6 overall. And of his last five fights, he's lost three of them. Lost three in a row. Alexander Volkov, Ezekiel Choke, uh, Sergey Pavlovich, knockout. And then Cyril Gaon, knockout. He did win over Derek Lewis uh, two years ago, knockout, and uh, beat Augusto Sakai two years and two months ago uh, via knockout as well. Marcin Tiber, on the other hand, 24 and 8 overall. Last loss was to Tom Aspinall via, you know, <laughs> crazy knockout. Uh, beat uh, Blagoy Ivanov via decision. Uh, beat Alexander Romanov via decision. Um, a loss to Alexander Volkov via decision, and then uh, got knocked out, or I'm sorry, knocked out Walt Harris uh, in uh, almost three years ago. And out of his last fight, fights he is uh, five, uh, three wins, two losses. Yeah, that was hard to get through. I don't know why. Currently, odds for this are minus 128 for Tai Tuivasa and a plus 100 for Marcin Tiber. Tai Tuivasa, exactly 31 years old, six foot two and a 75 inch reach, while Marcin Tibera is 38 years old, uh, six foot three and a 78 inch reach. Uh, yeah, I listened to a little bit of Tai Tuivasa this week when it came to his interviews, and he his exact words was, "I'm going out there for some head." Wait, that sounded weird, <laughs> but I believe that Tai Tuivasa going out here to 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 try to finish Marcin Tybura. However, Marcin Tybura is tough, man. Uh, you know, like it's tough to get that guy out of there. He's like a little, a little ball of muscle, but also a tank, you know, got a little bit of weight on him. And if you gas yourself out, dude, he's going to be there all three rounds. So kind of an interesting fight. I lean tied to Avasa. I do see why he's the favorite. He has more power and is going to get more oohs and ahs from the crowd. But Marcin Tybura, just a good fighter at heavyweight. You know, he's going to stand his ground. He's going to do what he has to do. But I guess give me Tai Tuivasa to win this fight uh, 29-28 on all – or actually, it's going to be five rounds, dude. Ugh. Fuck. I don't know, D-Rose. You, huh? you make your pick first here. Well, hey, um, I'll tell you – I'll, I'll come straight out and say it. I'm going Marcin Tybor here. I think okay. that um, – so I do think that – here's where I think the difference is. 
Um, if you look back, and it, it, it's kind of made me actually look back at Tato Ivasa's wins, uh, you could kind of make the argument that he kind of got to a point to where he overachieved in the UFC. Uh, so he kind of ended up going on a big win streak there. But uh, if you look at the win streak that he had, it was uh, Stefan Struve, Harry Hunsucker, Greg Hardy, Augusta Sakai, and then Derek Lewis, which is a good fighter. Obviously, we all love Derek Lewis. But uh, we all know that Derek Lewis can also make some mistakes in there as well, and he obviously did in that tie fight, even though he did have moments. Uh, but I think whenever Ty's kind of stepped up to that upper echelon of the division, I'm not saying Marcin Tybor is, uh, but, you know, Ty Tobasa has been turned back. I think Marcin Tybor has proven time and time again by, you know, Alexander Volkov. Uh, Derek Lewis was able to finish Ty to, or, uh, Marcin Tybor, but it took, a late third round rally from Derek Lewis to be able to get that type of uh finish. I just don't know if Taito Ibasa, once he gets taken down, man, he just has a rough, rough time getting back up. I think if this fight gets outside of the first round, I think it's Marcin Tybora's fight to lose. Um, I think my Marcin Tybora, if he can survive the first round storm, uh, if he can manage to not take as much damage on those leg kicks, able to get a couple uh leg checks in there. Uh, yeah, I think he can get uh, Taito Ibasa down. And when you get Taito Ibasa on his back, dude, he's a fish out of water. I'll never forget when JDS had him on his back. And Taito Ibasa is literally throwing hammer fit from his back because he just has no ground defense whatsoever. And I know that was a long time ago, but if you're asking me, I don't know where you can point to to say that Taito Ibasa has made those improvements. Until he shows me, I got to see him, man. So I think Marcin Tybor gets it done. All right. How do you think he gets it done, dear? Do you think this fight goes to decision? Uh no, I think he I think I think Marcin Tabor gets a late submission. Um yeah, I think uh we I and and let me say this. Alexander Volkov, you know I'm an Alexander Volkov fan. Dude, if you're getting submitted by Alexander Volkov in the third round, dude, <laughs> I gotta imagine Marcin Tabor, who's got some pretty good submissions in his bag. I think there's gonna be at some point in time, he's either gonna get some type of ground and pound. Or a submission. I'm going to say submission, but um, I think he gets a. I think he gets a late finish for sure, either TK or a submission. D Rose, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to give you my play of the week, dude. At plus twelve hundred, give me Ty Tuivasa to win this fight via points. At plus twelve hundred, dude. Marcin Tybur to win this fight by points plus 700. This fight to go to decision is plus 460. So, dude, I, I just – Marcin Tybur is tough, I hope this fight dude. doesn't go to decision. I hope it but, doesn't. For their but Marcin Tybur is tough, dude, and he's hard to finish. And we all know Ty Tuivasas, dude, Marcin Tybur does not have the firepower that Cyril Gaon has, dude. And it took Cyril Gaon some heavy shots to get Ty out of there, dude. And what, in the – Third or fourth round? Uh, I think it was the third round because I had that zero gone four or five decision. Believe me, I was salty after that. Yeah. I was salty after that because it was like 10 seconds left of the uh, yeah. round. Of yeah, dude. So I'm going to go with the favorite Tai Tuivasa here. Do I feel good about it? No, because I, I, I'm with you, dude. Tai Tuivasa looks like ass off of his back, but at the same time, I could see this fight looking. If I can see this fight, if it gets to the third round, dude, this is going to go to the hairy split decision, dude. <laughs> and it's going to be like, all right, dude. It wouldn't surprise me. I'm probably going to play it, dude. This fight to go to decision at plus like 480, dude, because it could happen. Both fighters are tough. The odds are worth it. Yeah. Uh, so that is all the picks for this weekend, y'all. I believe we have four different ones. Uh, Lush, I'm sure we'll end up popping them up on the screen here in a second. Uh, we got Let's Go Ty. Spice Girls gets me going on right now. Uh, Ty has a habit of repeatedly pulling up his shorts. They have been uh, punching him in the face every time for it now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, like, like almost like they do it like that's a poor year. Yeah, can't yeah. quite do it like for you. Uh, Tybura submission. Uh, Ty has counter striking, but uh, Tybura will be more accurate. And we got Lush Love Main right here, member for two months as well. You guys pick different on uh, one uh, Chad and Helliger versus Gregorio versus Ode Osborne versus uh, I said versus <laughs> Ode Osborne versus um, Philo. What, what, what's his name, dude? Pastor uh, Jafel. There we go. 
Uh, we got uh, Rodriguez versus the uh, C-Rod versus Isaac Gary and Ty Tuivasa yeah. versus Marcin Tabera. So I get the pleasure this week, D-Rose, of throwing one of the fights out. How does it feel, man? You're like, fuck, which one is he going to throw out? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm honestly, there are not a lot of good options that I got. So, I mean, I, I got a lot of I got a lot of dogs in here as well, man. So I'm not yeah, I'm not feeling the greatest here. I'm probably gonna throw. Uh, do I throw out the main event or the Ann Helliger Gregoria? Because the main event I have a favorite in. However, that's a sketchy ass fight. Or the first fight I have the dog in. But I don't really know a ton about Gregorio. See, it's tough. Got some dude. decisions, man. Got some decisions because that that's a bad part. You got an underdog that you feel better about than the favorite, but you don't know enough about the underdog's opponent to take him, man. Yeah. That's a that's a tough spot. I do not pity you. Yeah, dude. <laughs> It is interesting, man. I, I mean, I think that lets you know that, hey, you think that Marcin Tybora and Tatoe Vasa fight is a lot closer than uh, I think what a lot of people would have initially thought when that fight was first announced. Yeah, dude. Give me... I think I want to throw out the main event, dude. I don't feel good about the main event. I feel like Tybura can probably end up winning that fight, dude. So I'm going to do Ann Helliger versus Gregorio, where I'm going to go Chad and Helliger. D. Rose is going to go Gregorio. So, you know, you get the UFC newcomer, dude, that you know nothing about. Ha! Uh, We've got Ode Osborne versus uh, Jafel Filo, where I've got Jafel Filo. D. Rose is going Ode Osborne. And our third and final different pick, for the pick champ that's over D Rose's right shoulder, there is uh, C Rod Christian Rodriguez taking on Isaac Dolgarian, where I will be getting that pick champ back this upcoming week. Because D Rose, you're gonna eat three beans this upcoming week. I'm calling it three beaner for D Rose coming up. <laughs> Let's get all the grand baby. Uh, everyone on Ty KO, I'll take Tyber uh, KO three grounder pound. It wouldn't surprise me, brother. It wouldn't surprise me. Congratulations on the new member. Do we have a new member? Uh, let's see. Lush is the man. Uh, indeed he is. Uh, yeah, but better keep feeling for, for sure, dude. I, I, I would not, uh, keep that one out. I didn't get the membership. Just highlight the message. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, do you get, well, yeah, it's not his option. It was mine. It was mine to throw out. So we had uh, we have three different ones every single week, and I uh, just tossed out one of them. So, yeah, our three different picks for this weekend, and Helliger, Gregorio, Ode Osborne, Philo, and C-Rod, Dolgarian. The main event don't matter. So, you know, there's a chance I could get it done early in the night and not be sweating, just chilling, watching the main event, just making fun of D-Rose that he has to eat three beans uh, this, <laughs> this upcoming week. Yeah, so – with that being said, y'all, uh, we don't have anything else. Uh, we've been here about a, a little bit over an hour and 45 minutes. We appreciate all y'all for stopping by here tonight. If you're new here, please do your boys a favor. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button for your boys over here. We'd pretty much uh, appreciate that a lot. Uh, sorry, read it wrong. My dislike. Dude, you are not the only one. I have a habit of starting sentences like in the middle of the sentence. I'm like, what's wrong with me? Dude, start at the beginning of the sentence. I don't, I don't know. I'll just start in the middle. <laughs> there was a little boy, and once upon a time, it's like, what? Dude, how, like, how did you start from Like there? this, I would be like, you both stay safe, everyone, and good luck. We appreciate, like, I would go back to, like, we appreciate you, like, after I'd already, like, <laughs> like it doesn't make sense. I, I'm a weirdo. Yeah, we, be safe, everyone. Uh, see y'all later. Okay, good luck this week, man, boys. Yeah, so with that being said, uh, you know, I'll be here uh, Friday for Change of Cheddar. It'll be open to everyone. I'm going to stop doing the members only. We're just going to do the card thing for the members. You know, it is what it is. So, uh, see y'all Friday for Change of Cheddar. And, uh, yeah, next week, UFC Tops Chrome comes out. So, I'll be more a lot more active with UFC card shit starting next week. So, for all y'all here for UFC card shit, we'll be back at it next week. Appreciate all y'all for stopping by and all y'all for being so cool. Hanging out with your boys over here. With that being said, my name is Matt. D Rose is on that side of your screen. And uh, this has been the Golden Not the Guy MMA podcast. Remember, if you're betting your money, remember at the end of the day, it's a fist fight and anything can happen. So don't be out there betting more than you should. But that's going to be all from us. 
we'll catch y'all. Uh, catch me Friday. Catch me and D Rose next week. We'll catch y'all later. Peace.